Hello, Algebra 2 students, and welcome back to Algebra 2. This is section 6.2, Solving Quadratics Using Square Roots. You should be watching this video right after you just finished your test over Chapter 5. Okay, This is the succeeding video to 6.1. We are still going to be solving quadratic equations, except for now, we're just going to be using square roots. And it's really quite simple. We have x squared equals something could be a single number over here, okay? Or I even have x minus some number squared equals a number. Either way, it's not really going to matter because here we're trying to use square roots. Well, here we learned last in chapter five that to get rid of x squared, I would square root that, okay? Similar to down here. The only problem is, whatever I end up with this side over here, I can't forget that I have an index here of 2, which means I'm going to have to have plus or minus. And that is seriously the biggest part, okay? The biggest part about doing this. So I have this entry here. If we have x squared equals a number, then x is equal to plus or minus the square root of that. Seems rather straightforward. Pause the video, make sure you get that down. Okay, now that we got that, had time to do that, let's try some examples. It says solve using the square root problem. Okay. Here, my very first step is always to isolate the term with the power. Of course, here we're talking about the square, okay? So specifically, the term with the power would be x squared. I need to get that thing alone. So I need to subtract 11, right? That'd be my first order of business, and then I would have x squared equals 16. Once I've done that, the second thing to do is to take the square root of both sides. And then I put a little asterisk here. Don't, or sorry, don't forget the plus and minus. All right, over here on the example, then I take the square root of x squared, that would be x, the square root of 16 is equal to plus or minus 4. And here it looks like it's done. Okay, This one looks like it actually ended up being completed. The last technical step is to solve for x, or whatever variable you have. Here it seems to be done, so I just circle these. All right, let's try another example. Take a second, write these down. Or write this one down. All right, so now that you've had a chance to write it down, my first step is to isolate the squared term. That's the x squared. The 2 is not on it. Because the 2 is not on it, the first thing I should do is move the 15. And then do what? Negative 46. And then I would have to divide by 2. And I would get negative 23. Now I've isolated. The second step tells me that I'm supposed to square root. Okay, well I square root this. This is an x. This breaks down as 23. Or I should say, I don't think there's a perfect square that fits in there. So the first thing I would see is the negative 1 times 23. And then we have done this before. We take the square root of negative 1, that's i, and then I take the square root of 23, don't know, and then I can't forget that there was a 2 here. There was a 2, so I have to put plus or minus. And then I get a C that x, and then I drop my equals down, and if I write it a little nicer, this is x equals plus or minus i radical 23. Okay, on to the next one. Write this one down. Maybe try this one out on your own. 
Now that you've had a second to try that one out, this is the term I need to get along. First thing I should do is add 8. If I add 8, I would have a negative 8 over here. Then I need to multiply through by 3. If I multiply by 3 on this side, it will cancel those. Multiply by 3 over here, I get x squared equals a negative 24. Draw my radical, split 24. I think that's what this 4, negative 1, and 6. You draw your individual radicals over it. The square root of 4 would be 2. The square root of negative 1 is i. And the square root of 6 is the square root of 6. I cannot forget, though, that there were twos hiding in here, meaning I needed a plus or minus here, and there are my answers. Is that answer, okay, are these answers that we got imaginary, real, or complex? Well, the answer to that is, of course, they are just imaginary. These are just imaginary solutions because this is only an imaginary part. Do not forget for it to be complex. It would have to be a plus bi, which would look something like 2 plus 4 i radical 3. That would be an example of a complex number. Okay, this is a good one to start with here for the quantity squared. Take a second, write it down. All right, now that you've gotten it written down, we're still following the same steps. It's just so happened that this whole thing right here is the squared term, which means I have to move everything else away from it. I subtract one first. That'll give me negative 2 times, save a little bit of time here. I'm not going to rewrite it. It's that box thing, right? Equals 32. Then I would have to divide by a negative 2, which then will give me the box. Well, I know that's x plus 5. Quantity squared equals negative 16. I've now isolated it. Now that I have it isolated, I take the square root of it. The square root of negative 16, do not forget, this breaks down to 16 times a negative 1. The square root of 16 would be 4. The square root of negative 1 is i. There were 2's here. So this is plus or minus. I drop down everything else. That's x plus 5 equals that. Here's the big thing, okay? Now I have to move this across. I will always try to harp on this part to you guys. This 5 needs to be moved over. When you move it, it becomes negative 5. Then I will simply grab the stuff that was over here and drop it down. That's plus or minus 4i. X is left, and there is my solution. Now is a great time to pause the video and really make sure you understand what I just did there. On to the next one. Good, good time to pause this video maybe and try this one out on your own. Now that you've had a chance to try it out, this is the term I'm isolating. I need to add the 3. If I add 3 over, I would have a 12. Now that it's gone, I can square root it. The square root of 12 breaks down as 4 and 3. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 3 is the square root of 3. Do not forget plus or minus. And then I drop down the x minus 3. Again, I'm going to harp on it. This negative 3 gets moved over. When it moves, it becomes a positive 3. Then I take this thing here and I drop it down. Well, that's plus or minus 2 radical 3. And then I just write x equals. Is this answer real, complex, or imaginary? This is actually just all real. I don't know why I put two L's there. This is all real. There are absolutely no I's. So it can't be imaginary. If it, can't, if it doesn't have an imaginary part, it cannot be complex.
All right, this will be the last example that I do right here. Right, this is the last one. When I look at this example, I see that this actually could be factored right away. Okay, we could try to do this like we did the one before. Okay, uh, in six one, but I think this one factors pretty easily. In fact, I think I do that square root trick here, which means that it's x plus four times x plus four. Well, that's the same thing twice. And then I'm just going to drop this stuff over here down. So that's equal to negative 36. When I do that, it becomes really, really nice. Because now I see that I have the square thing isolated. I can square root it. That breaks down as 36 times a negative 1. The square root of 36 is 6. The square root of negative 1 is i. Do not forget your plus minus. I drop down the thing on the left side, that's x plus 4 equals that. Now again, I need to move this 4 across. When I do that, it becomes negative 4. Then I take this stuff that was already over there, and I drop it down. So I plus minus 6i, and then I write x equals, and then I have it. Are, the, are these solutions that I have written here complex? real or imaginary? Well, these ones are complex. The negative 4 is the real part. And then the 6i is the imaginary part. Technically, I should be writing this plus or minus 6i because I have exactly two solutions. One of them is negative 4 plus 6i, and the other one is negative 4 minus 6i. And that should be good enough for 6.2. If you feel confused, you should always rewatch the videos and or look on YouTube for another one.